Well, thank you, and again, uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, Tom Grandin, and uh, um, we have the Paradise Path Task Force. Uh, they've been working uh, since last spring <coughs> on a um, on a Paradise Path uh, improvement plan, uh, and uh, they've worked with some various commissions and uh, the Mobility Task Force to come up with this uh, task uh, to come up with a priorities list. And uh, anyway, uh, we presented this at uh, last week's, uh, I think, Public Works Committee, and uh, uh, it was felt that uh, the entire um, council needed to see this, so we're bringing it back to you. Um, we have um, um, Professor Mike Lowry here to present, uh, give you a presentation <coughs> on those priorities. It's pretty interesting stuff. Um, it's a little bit late, so bear with us, uh, but uh, there's some really good stuff here, and I think you'll really be impressed with what's here. And uh, if you uh, uh, accept away. this uh, report, then um, then we'll take the next task and, and try to raise funds and uh, figure out how to pay for some of these. Um, the uh, recommendation from staff tonight is to accept the Paradise Path Task Force project priorities list and or take other action as deemed necessary. <laughs> so with that, I'll turn this over to uh, Dr. Lowry. Oh, I'm sorry. I think uh, Margaret uh, Littlejohn, chair of the Paradise Path Task Force, she has a few comments first. I'm sorry. <laughs> we had two different discussions. Oh, Go ahead. My God. Good evening, Mayor Cheney and council members. Um, so Dwight kind of said most of the things I was going to say. Um, we've been working hard on um, moving forward on a priority list for the task force. And another thing that we did this year was to read, um, write our mission statement, which uh, is mainly to provide safe routes to schools, places of work, recreation, um, shopping, work locations, and businesses um, with non-vehicular methods of getting around the town. And we're trying to <coughs> provide a trail within a half mile of any place within Moscow. And we hope to have uh, pocket parks and um, encourage local input on our system. And so we were very happy to work with Dr. Mike Lowry, who is a civil engineer <coughs> professor at the U of I, who focuses on transportation planning. And he helped us design uh, or come up with 21 different projects, which we then prioritized ourselves and invited other commissions, as Dwight mentioned, um, to participate in the the prioritization and so tonight we're presenting those priorities to you the consolidated list of priorities dr. Lowry mayor Cheney and members of the council it's a pleasure to be here <coughs> I must say I, I am impressed with your patience for these long meetings <laughs> I, I wish my students were this patient I had no idea that we'd be here this long tonight but I'll go quick for us um, uh, it's it's a, a, an honor that the Paradise Pass Task Force asked me to do this presentation. I, I guess they uh, figure I'm used to giving presentations. Uh, I, I uh, have a lot of the slides that my students help put together for them. Let me just go through here. <coughs> this on the screen that you're most likely familiar with is the bike and pathway um, system for Moscow, and the different colors indicate um, existing or proposed uh, pathways or bike lanes, and this is uh, found on the city web page. Well, I entered the scene um, a year ago when I had a class that was a service learning class at the University of Idaho, and our service learning classes are an effort to get out into the community and do some service at the same time have a, a learning opportunity for the students. So my students met with, uh, I had a group of four students that chose to meet with the Paradise Path Task Force, and they um, through various meetings discussed what they would do and and what they were asked to do was to help to to, to clarify that map or, or to, to put together some concepts and ideas uh, of, a, of a better system and this is um, an overall scheme of what they 
came up with. Some of this isn't new. For example, the big loop around the outside, which they it's new that they called it the Palouse Loop, but that actually is in the comprehensive plan. Um, things that were new, though, were this pink inner loop, um, and then with the diagonal cutting across it. And then the uh, other kind of novel idea of the students was to better connect the on-street bike lanes, which is in blue, with the off-street paths, uh, which are then in green and pink and yellow on this map. Um, so the, the work of the students last year was in a report, and um, the, the, I, I believe there's copies that the city has um, of, of their project, and this was what the, at the beginning of the meeting today, that was what the award was for, in part was for this project that the students did with the Paradise Path Task Force. So let me just tell you a little bit more about the, some of the, the details. Um, so again, the, the blue would be on-street bike, uh, lane, bike lanes, and then the pink off-street. And the, um, one of the first things that the students did was to, to clarify this idea um, of different bicycle class, classes of bikeways. Um, there's a lot of cities that do this, and so they borrowed from existing literature on this. So a class one is an off-street path. A class two is something that we currently don't have here in Moscow, but is recommended. It would be a buffered bike lane. And that everything in pink would be mostly um, off-street paths, but then where needed, a buffered bike lane. And the idea is that this would serve uh, novice riders or uh, children, uh, families that are recreating, with tra trailers um, and also pedestrians uh, with strollers that are um, more comfortable off of the street. Whereas class three, a standard bike line, and class four also, which uh, doesn't currently exist in Moscow, but um, is a new thing that's recently been added to the, the engineer's standard manual of pavement markings. It's called a shared use lane. And research has shown that in certain situations, actually removing that line, that white line can make it safer because uh, vehicles feel a, um, a greater need to move more to the left for a bicyclist. So under low volumes often is when that's a safer alternative. And then class five sign, sign only routes and we do have a few of those in town. Um, the Paris Path Task Force because of their mission statement would continued throughout the after my students presented this idea to focus on that pink and in general trying to connect all of the parks which I show here in this map. Um, the idea is that the Transportation Commission or others from the city would uh, perhaps focus on the details of the bike lanes and, and uh, the on-street bikeways and, the, and those connections. So all of these uh, in blue as well as in pink are sort of conceptual ideas that would, would need further details. Um, a lot of it's missing, and so the, the next step was to say, well, wh where should we go forward? And um, this is small. I just show it just to, to describe to you that there were 21 projects, and along the top there what you see is a list of criteria that were used, not in a formal way, but just in a, in a general way to um, talk in order to have a conversation about these different projects. So the first one says access to destinations, mobility, is the next, then safety, then quality of life, feasibility, and cost. Um, to be able to put it on, on the table and to talk about these things, and certainly if we were to move forward or if the city were to move forward, they need to do a more formal analysis of some of these criteria in deciding how to go forward. Um, but what the, the, the Mobility Task Force did at, at a series of meetings is, is try and set some priorities, and then they passed this list around to the Transportation Commission, the Mobility <coughs> Task Force, the Safe Routes to School Group, the Active Living Task Force, and, um, the, and Parks and Rec in general to, to get some feedback on some of these ideas. And they came up with a list of five priorities as a result. And so I'm just going to briefly go through these five priorities. Um, the first one was the one that by far captured uh, the attention of, of a lot of the groups, the, the Mobility Task Force and the Transportation Commission and, and others. Um, and this, again, isn't a new idea either. Um, this, this actually, my students, when they're working on their plan, was something recommended to them by Bill Belknap. Uh, and the idea here is at Highway 8 near the Tresor gas station, the Paradise Creek goes underneath the highway. And um, if you were to branch off of the Paradise Path, you see the Tesoro gas station there in the background, go under the bridge, and then I think what was somewhat uh, of a novel idea for my students was 
to this idea that that would allow a continuous, and then you go down White Avenue, which has quite a large right-of-way, to go along that with a, a wide eight-foot path, just like we see here, uh, and then in, until the fairgrounds, go through the fairgrounds, and then connect to Heron's Hideout. And then this all exists currently. Um, Mountain View um, has a, a good piece of pathway on it as well. Um, and then we're into things that don't exist again. But at least it would it allow this nice connection here um, and most importantly, a way, a safe way to cross Highway 8 um, for pedestrians and bicyclists. Madam Mayor, can I ask a question about sure. this one? Sure, uh, Mike, tell me again how you're getting under Highway 8. Under, underneath this, underneath Highway 8. Uh, so re to rechannel the creek and to build a path underneath there. He'll show you Pullman did it. There's more pictures. Here, let me, let me, let me. <laughs> okay, well, I've never seen any of this, so I'm kind of at a loss. Yeah, those, those who were at the meeting last week, here, let, let me let me answer that, Walter, through some pictures. This this particular project, um, because it captured the imagination so well of so many people, uh, we decided the next semester to have a group of senior um, uh, civil engineering students go out and do a feasibility study of it. And they uh, went out there and they waded in the water and they surveyed it all out. They worked with um, uh, the hydrological professor at the University of Idaho, Dr. Fritz Fiedler, and did a flood analysis. This is the drainage basin there. They um, uh, looked at uh, the probability of flooding throughout the year. They looked at what the geotechnical situation is underneath the, the bridge. And uh, they looked at... Um, uh, regulations both at state level and recommendations at a federal level about clearance uh, for uh, any bike underpass and with recommendations and other other things that that would be concerned and all of that um, and then they also did drawings and CAD drawings uh, they did renderings 3d renderings of it all so does that sort of answer your question Walter it does sort of answer my question <laughs> um, and uh, there, this is all detailed in a, uh, a report. There were a few things that need to be worked out. For example, uh, this is a, um, a drainage pipe that would need to be rerouted. And there was also some things that they did f find in their findings, recommendations about railing types under these situations because of the potential for flooding and things. So there was quite a lot found. And, and uh, without um, taking too much time on it, I'll refer you to the report to get more of those details. And, I believe uh, Les or Bill have a copy of that. Um, so, but the most exciting thing that the students did, and I'm glad they did, was to go around and find some examples of retrofitted bridges. Because it's one thing to build an underpass at a bridge, and it's a whole other thing to retrofit it. And, and is that possible? Could you do it? And so here are some examples, and there's plenty of them. There's actually one much closer to than this was in... Um, this was in the Spokane area, but there is actually one in Pullman that's a good example. Um, here's down uh, in in Boise. Um, this one's in Colorado, where one of the students was from. Um, and then here's another example in Boise. And the, by the way, the, their study did did suggest that at a conservative amount, it might be flooded um, a week out of the year. Um, Here's another one in Boise when the creek is at its low point. So, so that's that. Um, I, I won't go into more detail on that. Just <coughs> quickly go through these other priorities. Um, the next one is Polk Street. There's not actually too much to say about Polk Street other than it was a, considered a priority. Here's an image of, of Polk Street looking to the north and uh, the city uh, property here. <clears throat> and just a concern that there's not sufficient bicycle and pedestrian amenities in this entire area. There's a lot of different uh, things that could be done. And um, it, it, at this point, this was just a concept and an idea that improvements need to be made there. And uh, it, it, we don't have the detail like we did with that first priority. I, Tom? I just wanted to add that um, earlier this week in the evening on the way home from work, I had an employee walking down the road the sidewalk ends right up here somewhere. And then she heard a car coming behind her. She turned to look over her shoulder to make sure that the car saw her, and in the process of turning this way, fell into the ditch on the side and got soaked. Luckily, the car stopped, picked her up, and took her home. <laughs> but it was, for me, a real illustration on mm -hmm. how we need to 
fix the sidewalk that just ends right there. Um, so that, it'd be nice to see. Yeah, thanks. Um, now these five projects are priorities of the Paradise Path Task Force, but as you may know, the other task force in the community are also putting together priorities, and this, I, I believe, happens to be one of the top priorities, if not number one, of the Mobility Task Force. Um, and I know that, th that this is a, a, a big concern of theirs as well. And there's lots of, uh, there's some public land, city-owned land up there that might be might be worked with with that, some of those ideas too. Um, uh, the third project um, uh, was to to do a, a, a cut and cap or some sort of tunnel at Mountain View um, so that the bike pa the uh, the bike path could go underneath Mountain View without obstruction without having to cross uh, and here are some images of similar types of thing this one here um, is sort of a corrugated uh, pipe style um, at Llewellyn, again, this one is not something that has a lot of detail in, in the same way Polk does. It's just a concern. Uh, that um, So this is 3rd Street. This is that awkward intersection of Llewellyn and 3rd. And um, uh, we're aware that the city has had for many years um, ideas of, of realigning that entire intersection. And um, I suppose what the Paradise Path Task Force is saying, well, that's, you know, it's something that we would, that the task force would like is when that consideration is made that bicycle and pedestrian um, needs are, are, are um, perhaps an integral part of that redesign. There's going to be a, um, the city's acquired this land here and is, is working on a park there. And this might make a nice, um, depending on what happens, of course, with, with this property, but it, whether it went this way or this way, this this could make a nice pedestrian bicycle access to uh, Rosars and to the residential areas to the north. Again, not 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 too many details there. Just uh, conceptually, that this is an important uh, location for the task force. And then the fifth one is um, the the Third Street, and just uh, as been has been in many discussions before the idea of perhaps dropping a prefabricated pedestrian bicycle bridge there. So those are the, the projects. Um, there's questions. I might defer to Dwight or Margaret, but I could try. Thank you, Mike. That was excellent.